A couple of days ago, I was on a call with a friend from my home country and he asked me a weird question. What's up? So now that you've been in Germany for a year, mm-hmm. what are the biggest differences you've noticed between Kenya and Germany? Okay. Maybe you could make the shift sometime soon. Okay. Now I'm trying to figure out a few things. Ah, okay. Okay, that's yeah. actually a big step. Yeah, hey, maze. Uh, so the first one is... So I decided to make a video talking about the differences that I have experienced having lived in both countries since I'm sure anyone coming to Germany would have the same set of questions. Before we get started, if you are also living in Germany, let me know in the comments section if I missed any particular culture shock that you may have experienced. And also like, comment, subscribe, it's free and it lets me know that you guys are enjoying the videos. You can't really make a video talking about culture shocks in a new environment without talking about its people. If I were to describe the German people, particularly the natives born and raised in Germany, I would use two main words to describe them. The first word would be disciplined. When I use the word disciplined, what I mean is that Germans, well, at least most of them, tend to be very serious about the rules. Like for example, at a crosswalk, a lot of them will tend to wait till the light turns green for them to cross the road even if there are no vehicles on the road when the light was red. This is how you know you're in Germany. People do not jaywalk even if there are no cars coming. They wait until it's green. Another example is that for whatever reason, if a native German doesn't really like you, 90% of the time they will choose to rather avoid you than confront you because they know the rules and they know the consequences when broken. The other word that I would use to describe the people living in Germany alongside disciplined is reserved. Personally, I found it quite difficult to constantly make new German friends. I don't know if it's because I don't speak the language fluently or maybe I'm always in the wrong places, but more often than not as a foreigner, many of your friends are most likely going to be also foreigners, especially in the beginning. Kenyans on the other hand are quite the opposite. We tend to be very friendly, warm, inviting, and there's a sense of community because people tend to give a shit about each other. I challenge you right now, ask anyone who has ever visited Kenya and they will surely confirm this. Timekeeping is one aspect of living in Germany that I particularly struggled with when I first came here because everything is usually on time and on schedule, whereas back home we tend to work on <laughs> Kenyan time. 8 a.m. in Germany literally means 8 a.m., whether it's the bus, the train, lectures, meetings, whatever the event is, it is always on time. Simply because here, time is money, literally. People are usually paid for work on an hourly basis and just generally they grow up with the culture of always being on time from an early age and really get triggered and even in some cases offended when someone or something is late. Back home, let's just say people tend to be more relaxed. Like if someone says we're going to meet at 10 a.m., just be aware that 10 a.m. ranges from 10.01 all the way to 10.59. There's one particular aspect that I really miss now because I'm not in Kenya and that is the provision of services. Back home, there's a lot of services that are rendered that I used to take for granted. Like for example, at a petrol station in Kenya, there's always an attendant to pump your gas, help you fill your tires with air, wash your windshield and your rear window. Or another example is at supermarkets. There's always someone to pack your bags and even help you to carry them to the car. 
in Germany, there's a lot of do-it-yourself culture. You pump your own gas and then you go pay for whatever you've consumed. And at the supermarket, you literally pack your own bags. I'm sure you get the point by now. I think the reason why things are the way they are here is a lot of companies try to minimize operating costs as much as possible. They do this by employing as few people as possible. So services that I used to take for granted back home would be considered a luxury here. Let's just say the food in Germany tastes different. And please, don't get me wrong. It's not that the food here is bad. It's just that it doesn't taste as good as the food I was used to back home. Like in the first few weeks after I arrived, I started craving homemade dishes such as ugali, pilau, nyamachoma, chapati, and so on. Another aspect I think is a big disadvantage of living in Germany is that the food that is good for you tends to be way more expensive. What I mean by that is that healthy options such as vegetables, fruits, meat, and so on tend to be way more expensive than unhealthy processed foods such as pizzas. So let's say it's the end of the month and you're already on a very tight budget because we've all been there. There's a very high probability that you will have to settle for the unhealthy processed meals which tend to bring out lifestyle diseases such as obesity, diabetes, and even high blood pressure. Whereas in my home country, you can still get healthy, unprocessed foods at way more affordable prices. The next big difference between the two countries is the weather. Out of the 12 months of the year, six are unbearable with the temperatures either being below 10 degrees or 28 degrees and above. From the remaining six months, three are constantly cold and rainy. And finally, the final three months are the only ones I can say have good weather. On the other hand, the weather back home is fantastic throughout the year, ranging between 15 and 30 degrees Celsius for Nairobi specifically. So it's not too hot or too cold throughout the year. I didn't realize how much I took for granted the good weather I had back home until I came to Germany. Germany has one of the best transportation systems in the world, especially in big cities such as Munich. You have buses, trams and different types of trains such as the U-Bahn and the S-Bahn, which usually operate until 1 in the morning. There's also the option to use bicycles and e-mobility options such as electric bikes and scooters 24 hours a day because there are actual cycling lanes on the road. In Germany, not only do you have a variety to choose from when it comes to public transportation, it's also pretty well organized and punctual. Well, most of the time it is. It is certainly way better than the mess of a transportation system back in Nairobi where you have poorly maintained vehicles being driven recklessly, hence risking commuters' lives, constant fare hikes in rush hour or rain periods. Then there's also the constant fear of your phone getting stolen when using public transportation and finally dealing with these guys. The thought of having to deal with Kenyan traffic police officers for whatever reason, nine out of 10 times gives me anxiety and depression. If you take time and do your research, you will easily find out that Germany is much more safe when compared to Kenya. Take for example this study by the Institute for Economics and Peace. They came up with a global peace index that ranked the safest and most peaceful countries in the world. Germany's GPI was at 1.46 while Kenya's was 2.25. These may seem just like numbers, but if you had an opportunity to live in both countries, you would actually get to see the difference between the two countries in terms of safety. For example, as you walk around Munich, you get to notice one major trend. Many people have headphones and they ain't cheap. A pair I tend to see a lot are these Marshall ones that cost 100 euros. 
and people wear them and walk freely without fear of being robbed. On the other hand, back when I was doing my bachelor's at the University of Nairobi, I would only carry my laptop to school when necessary. And on these special occasions, I wouldn't use public transport since I feared I could be mugged either on the way to school or on the way back home. One other huge culture shock that I have personally experienced is that on Sundays, everything is closed, which I find to be really annoying because on one hand, it's good to rest. But on the other hand, I feel that this rule limits your ability to fully do the things that you enjoy on the weekends that you can't really do on a weekday. So for example, I study and work at the same time, which means my Monday to Saturday is really busy. But now because 98% of businesses are closed on Sunday, I have to squeeze all the extra activities such as shopping within the same hectic six days. There are so many times that I have had to eat only pasta for dinner on Sundays because I couldn't do shopping during the week. And also, I don't know if it's just a Munich thing where stores close at 8 p.m. daily, but it's really annoying because if you're trying to go to a supermarket at 7.30 p.m., the lines tend to be really long because everyone is rushing to buy the stuff that they need before the store closes at 8 p.m. Like seriously, chain stores such as Aldi and Lidl at the bare minimum should be allowed to open until midnight. This literally happens in many countries around the world and even in Kenya, stores like Carrefour open daily from 8 a.m. to midnight. One aspect about Germany that I really like is that a lot of effort goes into recycling of waste. As you walk in different neighborhoods, especially in big cities, you see these different colored bins. For example, you have these gray bins which are used for residual waste that cannot be recycled. These items are usually taken and burnt to produce heat and electricity. Then you have these blue bins for clean and uncoated paper which can be recycled into new paper. And lastly, you have these brown bins for compost waste, which is basically anything that can rot. When compared to my home country, let's just say <laughs> we have a lot of catching up to do when it comes to recycling. The next major difference that I have noticed between the two countries is the education system and in particular free education. In Kenya, students, well, at least most of them, pay a lot of money for school fees in order to study all the way from kindergarten to the university level. Whereas in Germany, it's a little bit different. Education here is free and it's for all residents all the way from Grundschule, which is like primary school all the way to the university level, which I think is a good thing since every child gets access to high quality education without having to pay to go to the best schools like is the case back home. Finally, the last huge culture shock or difference between the two countries that I have noticed is the excessive amount of taxes that one has to pay if they choose to live and work in Germany. Like for example, if you have a dog, you have to pay annual dog tax called Hundesteuer. As a Christian, you have to pay church tax on your monthly income. And if you own or do not own a TV or a radio, you still have to pay for radio tax. Mind you, these taxes are added on top of your standard taxes such as income tax and VAT, which by the way is at 19%. When compared to my home country on the other hand, Germany's taxes may seem a lot, but in my opinion, I think the taxes in Germany are seriously worth it. Simply because taxes here are better utilized to ensure adequate service provision to taxpayers, which basically means that the transportation network works the streets don't flood when it rains, there are no power blackouts like ever, there is provision of adequate public healthcare service, there is availability of jobs and an overall reduction in crime rate. So even though the taxes are really high, in my opinion, 
I think they're worth it as the overall quality of life in Germany is way superior than that of Kenya. If you have watched this video to the end, first of all, thank you so, so much for taking time to watch it. I really do appreciate it. I only ask that you leave a like and a comment on the video to let me know that you have found value in the content. I guess the conclusion is that the two countries are significantly different in many ways, as they both have their own strengths and their own weaknesses. I wouldn't say I prefer one over the other. Well, at least not as of right now, but you never know, things might change in a few months time. So hit the subscribe button to keep up with any new uploads on this channel.